all roads end at social media. <laughs> That's literally the, the yeah. thing is like, the only product that I can visualize it on is like, what's it look like on YouTube? What's it look like yeah, on social media? For sure. What's yeah. it look like on Instagram, blah, blah. How are people um, gonna consume it? Yes. Uh, speaking of that, you know what's funny? You brought up um, FOMO. Fear of missing out. And when you said that, I was like, what the fuck is FOMO? Well, I read F-O-M-O. Uh, I was like, what the fuck is F-O-M-O? And two old guys at work. <laughs> it's like, fear of missing out? I was like, wait, what? And it was like, yeah, it means fear of missing out. I said, well, that makes sense why he put it next to social media. But like, wait, how do y'all know that? And I've never heard of that before. Damn, and I'm tapped in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tapped in. <laughs> or they are. Or I'm just not tapped in. I don't know no, what the yeah, fuck no, is going I, on. I, I vividly remember. You oh. ever have those like moments in your childhood where it's not really that crazy, but for some reason you just can't get it out of your head. You just specifically remember that. Yeah. For some reason, it was the early 2000s. I don't know the exact year, but I know I was in like fourth or fifth grade and I was on the internet unsupervised. Mm. <laughs> that is why I am the way I am. For anybody watching, right? Everybody goes, oh, why are you like this? It's because I was on the internet at a young age without any parental supervision. That's crazy. <laughs> and I don't know why the fuck I was on AOL, but there was an article. Yeah, there was an article about FOMO, the new rising um, fear um, with like social media and technology and the internet. And I was like, FOMO? I'm like, that sounds cool, but like, let me look into it. And then it was like the fear of missing out. And then the, I don't know what connected in my brain, but I'm like, huh, the fear of missing out. And then ever since then, that's just always been stuck in the back of my head. And I don't know. I've always wanted to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. It's not something I personally suffer from. Right. And it's weird, but I've never been the type of person to like, wants to be like I've never seen Game of Thrones. Right. Um I don't go to the movies anymore. I haven't been to the movies since Endgame. Yeah, that's um, that's a usual nice stopping point for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh like I've been to the movie theaters. Not like I haven't seen a Marvel movie or anything. Like yeah, I just wait just for them to come out on. Yeah. Right. Um uh I don't really care about the first like I don't like reaction videos. Mm -hmm. no, so like when people sense. are reacting to everything that, that was weird. Kendrick Lamar and stuff, like I don't care. Now there when it comes to certain things, I care what per certain people have to say about it. Yeah. The entire Kendrick Lamar Drake beef, I was always tuned in to Joe Rogan. Uh not Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan. Uh, you mean no, Joe Budden? Joe Budden. I was about um, to say, bro. I was always, uh, <laughs> Joe Rogan is crazy. Yeah, uh, I was always tapped into uh, Joe Budden. I was always tapped into Rory Mo. Uh, I was oh. kind, and I hate fucking DJ Academics. But I was tapped into like what DJ Academics was saying, yeah, that's, just to that's see that's what Drake's everybody was soldier. saying about it. But it wasn't like I got to be the first there to see and like see what they're saying. I just wanted to like I wanted to hear what those people yeah, specifically see, were the saying. Complete about it. opposite, bro. Like I felt so vindicated. <laughs> Oh my God, I was waiting for this moment for years, bro. <laughs> I, like, I vividly remember when I first heard the control verse by Kendrick Lamar, you know, I'm on Twitter. I think it was like 2014 around then. No, tw no, it's no, it's way earlier than that. Way earlier than that. Like 2011 ish. Yeah. So I'm on Twitter or whatever, social media. And I hear people talking like, yo, this, this crazy verse by Kendrick this is crazy. I'm like, let me go hear it. Y'all hyping this up. Blew my mind, right? And Still was a hyped up album. I mean, hyped up first. That's neither here nor there. I think Kendrick Lamar is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> we can have this entire podcast go back and forth. I'm not doing this. Yeah. I just did it two yeah. episodes ago. Yeah, you can't. Again. You can't do this. You're going to lose with me. <laughs> Look, I'm rapper sexual. This is my <laughs> feat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, right? So, control verse, and I'm like, it's, I knew it was a defining moment, right? I'm like, this is something that will live on forever if you talk about rap history. And then, you know, all these other rappers are replying or making their remixes, and nobody really gives a fuck. And I'm just kind of like, eh, you know, like, 2014 was Faces. Uh, Mac Miller, he even had a line, um, no uh, LGT connection bars, fuck you, Kendrick. So I'm like, oh, this is still in your mind, like three, four years later, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, then I saw the interviews with Drake and his reaction to that, and he was just like, but, and I'm like, huh, 
okay, whatever. Then there was the BET cipher with Top Dog Entertainment, and then you know the iconic Kendrick where he's like, oh, uh, since Control dropped and put a sensitive rapper in his pajama clothes, ha ha, jokes on you, high five. High five, schoolboy Q, and everyone's like, oh my God, look at the synergy between these guys. They're best friends. And I'm like, you're not listening to what he's saying. And then Kendrick goes quiet. You know, like there's subliminal shots back and forth, but there's no full on beef. So I'm I'm like a madman. And I'm like, Kendrick's next album, he, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And then, you know, throws a little shot, but that's it. I'm like, oh, Drake's going to bring it to the light. Throws a little shot. And I'm like waiting for like a decade or so. And then we finally get here. Boy, <laughs> I feel like the paranoid nigga who's like, I told you aliens are going to come. <laughs> and then we're getting invaded on Earth. Bro, I ripped my shirt off and I'm running around and I'm like, let's talk about it. Like, I was there for every reaction. Like when um, Kendrick was dropping the tracks back to back. Funny enough, I was at a 24 hour Star Wars marathon at the Tyson's movie theater at AMC and Kendrick dropped Meet the Grams after episode four or five. And, you know, after the movie ends, we like all these nerds are running out. And then I just hear, did you hear Kendrick dropped? And I'm like, the fuck you know about Kendrick, Obi-Wan? <laughs> <laughs> Let me find that. And like, we were all scrambling and talking about it, like listening on our phones. And I'm like, this, this is what I wanted. <laughs> you know, like I was, I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. And so I was definitely, I was boggled down with FOMO because I'm like, I don't want to miss anything from this. Like I was waiting for years. Like the chosen one has returned. The prophecy has been fulfilled. And then now everyone's just kind of like, all right, I'm bored. And I'm like, wait, no, there's still <laughs> more you didn't catch. <laughs> like I had the moment, but now it's gone. Maybe that is an example of, because of that, like I would have been, I don't know. Cause I was hard pressed. Like, Here's my thing about the, um, I, I, again, I'm going to argue that Kendrick Lamar is overrated. Now, you can't tell me otherwise. Yeah, you're entitled to your opinion. But um, when it came to a lot of his music, like um, Euphoria, I fuck with Euphoria. Oh my, that's my most streamed song. I, I know it. I know it, bro. <laughs> like that track dropped, that's all I listened to for a month straight. The first 60 seconds, I'm like, yeah, I could have did without this. And then I like the build up, and then I'm like, all right. With the first part included, this is a really dope song. Of course, like, song it's structure. Just the, if the if the first part of the song was the only part there, or no, if the cadence no. and flow yeah. was only like the first part, I would have like, bro, throw this out. Yeah, exactly. But didn't care for Meet the Gramps. Didn't care for um, uh, 6 p.m. in L.A. or oh, 6.16 whoa. in L.A. Whoa, man, that's a beautiful track. Didn't it's care for survival. it. Um, didn't care about that. Didn't care for uh, Meet the Grand, especially since the daughter thing wasn't real. Um, and then Not Like Us is Ooh. becoming my new um, gold digger. By Art Kanye West. It's like, that song is so fucking overplayed right now. I love it. It's, I love it. I haven't had a hit rap song in so long Yeah, you like niggas this. can keep dancing to a pedophile anthem. I'll pass. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> what you mean? What you mean? R Russell Westbrook over here twerking to a pedophile anthem. I'm good yeah, Fuck that. it, bro. Um, <laughs> hey. But, um, I'll join him. No, obviously because of that, because of Not Like Us, I will give it that... As far as a beef for beef standpoint, Kendrick won the art, the the rap beef. I still think Drake put out better music, but um, and it's really because of I think uh, Family Matters is the best project to come out of that entire beef. But Taylor made freestyle; it just hits a lot different for me. That's my favorite track out of this entire beef is Taylor Me Freestyle. I know the kind of nigga you are. I got you. Wait, what? I got you. All right. What? Nah, my mental profile of you has been completed. You have been psychoanalyzed. <laughs> You know how like when you be setting up a new website or a new profile and it'd be like you're 75% completed. Yeah, just enter yeah, this yeah, information. Yeah. And <laughs> you gave me all the pieces I needed. You know. We can make this a whole deconstructed podcast about you. Yeah, no. They, we are on episode 86. They know me. <laughs> These niggas know me. We're gonna have the meet the grams version, bro. This is what episode 86 is like. Not trying to be very open about everything that doesn't need that can be open. There are some things that can't be open, right. but I try to be very open on this podcast about like my life and stuff. Like, um, you gotta be. Yeah, I try to make my, my personal very public, in a sense. But, you know who um, also does that? Kendrick Lamar. Mm. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers was a therapy session. Mm. Guys, share. Was that his worst performing album? No. So what was? 
No, it wasn't. So what was? Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Section 80. It wasn't. Yeah, I could call that. It wasn't. Look it up. I smell the fear on you. It's okay. Type it in. Hmm. It's getting shaky. Shaky warrior. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know about that one. Um, um, I'm trying to look up his album discography. Stream Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers if you care about black mental health. Say what? Stream Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers if you care about black mental health. That's what the album's about, man. Freeing yourself from your Oh, demons. okay. All right. You're right. Section 80 oh, did. Whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm, I'm what? Uh, you're right. 130,000 sales. <laughs> but Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers did 177,000 sales. But, but see, we're damn, talking about Pepper Butterfly and Good Kid Mad City both went over a million. Okay, and? Oh, okay. <laughs> Bro, I'm here for the music, not the numbers. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm a rapper sexual. We went through this. <laughs> I'm not a prophet sexual or a businessman sexual. I'm here for the raps and the bars and the impact of the culture. I don't give a fuck about no damn sales or Grammys. <laughs> what you mean? Childish Gambino has the same amount of BET awards as Sam Smith. Sam Smith, <laughs> you want to talk about sales and accolades? Be for real. <laughs> That's a crazy statement to say out but loud. But it's facts. Not as facts. Unfortunate <laughs> facts, man. Oh, I think shit. he might even have more Grammys than Will Smith. And that's an atrocity in rap history. <laughs> what you mean? This nigga Will made hits using clean raps. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to make a banger with no cursing and no, like, real explicit, man? This nigga out here, just the two of us. And I'm like, real. But besides the point, rapper sexual, I'm here for the art, not the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the art, not the numbers. <laughs> 